My name is Allison Pike. I'm the parent of two children with autism. I'm also the president of the Autism Society of Alberta. I speak with families all across the province and we're exhausted, we're stressed, we're frustrated, and we're tired. My question today is, what is your understanding of the FSCD Act, Family Supports for Children with Disabilities Act, and what is your party's commitment to children with disabilities and their families for empirically based treatments such as applied behavioral analysis? Please don't refer to your, your commitments to education. I'd like to hear your commitments to families and their children with disabilities outside of the education system. All right, we'll start with Ron. Um, great question, Allison. Um, and I know you're a great advocate for, you know, for your children and people with you know, autism. In the, in, like, let me go pretty on with my minute now. Um, in, the, in the 90s, uh, Alberta government ran a uh, department under child, children's services called Handicapped Children's Services. And HCS was interesting because they didn't tell anybody, uh, anybody, any parents with children with disability what services they would fund. This is no word of a lie. This is when I worked on the government side trying to um, uh, redevelop the children's services system. So we went to them and said, you need to have a list of stuff that parents um, know what services and supports they can get for their kids. And they said, well, no, we're not allowed to. So this, this, this is a direct relation to what you're saying right now. Is, uh, and the point is it was all driven by dollars, not by needs of, of the children. Still is. Um, and I think we need to get away from that, especially when we're talking about kids and, and families in need. Um, I don't know if, if, if the people that are drafting some of these legislations understand the stresses on families that are dealing with kids with, with, with disabilities. Um, my personal position on this, and, 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 and our, I would hope our parties is, because we don't have a distinct platform on this, is that we would support families um, to be able to look after their children in the best way possible. And that, you know, that, that just makes too much sense, right? Thank you, Rob. We'll move on to Kent with Lines. Thanks, Allison. It's good to see you again. Uh, I think this is the third time that I've run into you both at the door and the second forum here. Um, what we want to do as a lot of those parties, we want to work with stakeholders like yourself to make sure that our policies line up uh, to do the best that we can for your children and to take that stress load off of people like yourself. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to streamline and decentralize uh, um, procedures to ensure more funding flows to the, to the, to the, directly to the individual and the families in need. And we would phase out uh, PB, PBD and in favor of a more localized uh, board that would handle funding for, for situations like this. We believe that people at the front line make better decisions than, uh, than you know, relying on people in negative. Tom. Hi, Allison. Hi. Thanks for that question. Uh, you know, the NDP's, one of the NDP's core values is uh, support for families. And uh, while I'm not familiar with specific policies that uh, directly apply to the question you asked, I, I know that uh, our core values are giving people uh, who have special circumstances uh, extra support wherever possible. And uh, empowering them to be able to function and uh, develop the uh, abilities and uh, do the best for their families that they can. So when when we see a need like that, we it's one of the things we like to address. And we feel that uh, if somebody needs some uh, programs, it should be part of our healthcare system and part of our funding system that they can uh, access that on the. Uh, on the typical wages that an Albertan makes. So um, we like to give a hand where needed and uh, we're certainly uh, glad to hear those issues raised and I'd uh, like to study them further. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Allison. I believe that early intervention is probably the greatest return that we can ever have on, a, on our dollar. And I know that with autism, again, there is a huge um, variance in autistic children and how they present. 
But there is so much research, and I have spoken with Allison on a number of occasions, that if these children usually get diagnosed around the age of two-ish, if they have that consistent training, and there is a program out there at ABC, I think, um, there is a program out there that if these children have consistent training day after day and, and week after week and year after year, by the time they're five and six, they really are starting to show the ability, uh, particularly those that have problems with, um, with uh, socialization. And it's important that we get them, but one of the things that I'm understanding um, after speaking with Allison is that a lot of that is now being downloaded onto the parents. And before they used to have help that would come in. Children that are artistic are very, very difficult to raise 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there has to be some help for the parents, some sort of a respite, some kind of a relief. But there absolutely has to be funding and it has to be recognized that to start early is the only way that we're going to be able to help these children become um, beneficial members of society, but more importantly, that they're beneficial to themselves, that they do know their life and they do know what they want to do, and that they are able to do it. I think Temple Grandin is probably a perfect example of what autistic children can become. Thank you, Bridget. All right, we have time to go to one more question before closing off. We have one? 